This episode of the Blair White Project is sponsored by Green Chef. Go to greenchef.com slash Blair60 and use code Blair60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, that's greenchef.com slash Blair60. Use code Blair60 to get 60% off free shipping. And now on to the episode. Ahem. Is this thing on? Because I am fully aware, and I hope you guys, you know, jump me in the comments about this because I deserve it, that there has been no podcast for two weeks. I have a few excuses. I am that bitch with excuses. The first is there was one week that was totally like planned to like not have a podcast come out because I was traveling and that was whatever. I was going to take the L. I was like, you know, I'm traveling. There's no way I can get to the studio. They just have to deal with one week with no podcast. And then... (laughs) When it came time to film the next week, all of a sudden, there is a crazy effing ice storm in Austin. And I don't know what it is about Austin, Texas, but when it goes beneath like 35 degrees, it is suddenly like a third world country. It's suddenly like apocalyptic. I had no power for like four days. The entire city was like, I think there's still parts of the city with no power like over a week later. It's insane. So listen. One week was my bad. I was traveling. The second week, second week was Austin's bad. Um, but we're back, and we have some sh- to talk about. On everyone's lips right now is Miss Hogwarts legacy, Miss J.K. Rowling, and her. You know, it's not even her game. It's like she wrote the books, and then the games are loosely inspired. But of course, everyone's up in arms because producer saying I had something. Is it fixed? Sick. Um, how long was that there? A while? Okay. So, <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy, no joke, people are really losing their shit for it. And it's crazy because apparently there is a trans character in Hogwarts Legacy. So, that representation that people always say they want, it's like JK must have signed off on having a trans character in the game, which I think is great. You know, like, I feel like a lot of conservatives get very, like, upset. It's, like, when they see, like, any trans character and anything, it's, like, oh, it's woke, it's wokeness. It's, like, mm, trans people do exist and they should show up in games and TV shows. I just don't like when it's forced. I don't like when it's, you know, play, they're placed in a role or they're placed in a, in a story where they don't belong just for the sake of having them there, right? That's when I get annoyed. A lot of people go overboard and they're, like, oh, them being there at all is an issue. I'm not like that, um, obviously, because I'm not stupid. Uh... <laughs> but I think it just goes to show, you know, is JK really this demon that people say she is, this transphobic, you know, whore that everyone says she is, if she's putting in a trans character, I don't think so. I think the real demons are the people that are attacking others and demonizing people who want to play a video game. I can't wait to play the game. I believe it comes out um, Tomorrow, the next day, uh, whenever this show comes out, I'm sure it'll be out or about to come out. Um, I can't wait to play. Y'all know I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, I'm trans, and JK's comments never threw me off. Like, what did she say that's that bad? Biological sex is real? I, I believe that. Um, rapists shouldn't be in women's prisons. Male rapists, I believe that. Uh, hit me up when she says some shit I don't agree with, and then I can jump on the anti-JK uh, bandwagon. But so far, she's great. <laughs> she gave me an amazing childhood. She gave me a franchise that I deeply connected with, and to spit on that, because because what? Because you want to jump on some like hive mind cluster F like mentality towards her? Like no. Uh, the point is, there appears to be. I believe this just got shut down. But this just goes to show the extent for which people are really coming after JK, people who play the game, etc. You're the villain here. Web, web developer creates site to track streamers who play Hogwarts Legacy and Twitter has a meltdown. What's so funny about that to me is, first of all, if you're the type of person for which I know there are a lot of people like this in this day and age, which is unfortunate, tragic, depressing really, but if you're the type of person who doesn't play a video game because you're just so scared of people on the internet calling you transphobic. You deserve nothing in life. You're weak. You're a pussy. You're a bitch made. Like, it is what it is. The people are really avoiding playing the game because they're scared of getting backlash. These Twitch streamers, which, you know, they blink wrong and they get canceled on Twitch. People are like, when are you going to start a Twitch channel? When are you going to start a Twitch channel? Why? So I can blink wrong and get canceled? I don't understand. Like, they're... There obviously are a lot of great communities on Twitch, but like overall what I see is like every other day they're having to come on camera crying about like 
I did this or I did that. It's like, I'm just not that person. You know, I apologize when I'm actually wrong. You know, you have church streamers apologizing for showing interest in playing Hogwarts Legacy. No, no, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. And there's something to be said about like, okay, so I've been doing what? Social media and YouTube for seven years now, right? That is some, <laughs> when's the retirement fund kicking in? Like she's old at this point, right? Like that is literally, I would say 70 years in internet history. Like the fact that I'm still here and still doing this, <laughs> my back hurts a little bit, but damn. Um, you're not going to last on social media if you're a creator who feels the need to come on camera and cry and apologize over everything people get on you for. That doesn't mean you shouldn't apologize when you're actually wrong. She's made an apology video or two because it was warranted. But over some shit like that, it's like, mmm. Maybe don't. Uh, listen, play Hogwarts Legacy if you want to. Don't play if you don't want to. If you have no connection with, with Harry Potter, that's the other thing. I, I see a lot of people, all, this is equally as cringy. I see a lot of people being like, I'm going to play Hogwarts Legacy just to piss off the Wokies or whatever. It's like, do that if you want, but that's kind of annoying too. I don't know. The point is, I think it's going to be a great game. And I really don't care what people say. And you shouldn't either. It's the overall theme of like my channel, podcast, etc. Anyways, moving on to one of the issues that JK has highlighted that she gets so much hate for, which is crazy. It doesn't have to do with her, but she talks about this. The trans prison problem. And we're not talking the trans prison problem when someone's been, you know, arrested for a little bit of weed. Someone's been in a scuffle on the street. Someone's drunk and disorderly. We're talking like biologically male rapists being placed in women's prisons. Something that, hi, pretty sure, you know, pe people don't like when I get cocky. I don't care. Like, if it's just correct, it's correct. I, the sky is blue. I didn't make it so. My hair is brown. I didn't make it so. This is my real hair color. Um, I've been saying for years and years and years this is going to be an issue. I was ringing the alarm when it first started happening and there was one or two cases. And I said, hi, this is going to be an exploding problem. And now it is. So it, <sighs> this story right here is just insane. This rapist decided he was no longer a man after appearing in court on a rape charge. Fury, a sex attacker, transitions before trial and is sent to women's prison, despite warnings about Surgeon General's gender change law. Insane. And um, editor, can we put the pictures of this absolute disgusting person on the screen? Uh, <laughs> come on, camel balls. It's just really, really disgusting. I don't want to make light of it and joke about the person's appearance, although it is like a joke, like you're wearing yoga pants and like everything's exposed. It's like you literally, you walked up to Ross at 9 a.m. opening time, picked out their finest jacket and legging set, and now you're saying you're a woman. Don't forget the Party City wig. They always have that. Although that looks like human hair, I'm not going to lie. Did he really go in for that? That looks like human hair. Listen. Maybe she put some coin in the wig. I'm not going to lie. But regardless, <laughs> she, it's, it's a man. If you, if you rape a woman, if you use your manhood to sexually violate a woman, you're a man. I don't care. Get mad. <laughs> Who's going to get mad? Oh, I misgendered a rapist. I don't care. Insane. So <laughs> there is fury today after a transgender rapist attacked two women as a man, then changed gender before the trial. Isla Bryslin was a shaven head Adam Graham with a Mike Tyson style face tattoo when they carried out the violent sex attacks in 2016 and 2019 after abusing the victims they originally met online. Bryson, who claimed to have gender issues since the age of four, funny how you only <laughs> transitioned after you raped women and were facing legal consequences for that. Interesting. Uh, began transitioning from a man to a woman in 2020 after being charged. The attacker denied the accusations, telling juror any sex was consensual, although Bryson insisted that she did not sleeping with women and they made the first move. Listen, whatever excuses come out of this POS's mouth don't really matter. The point is we are living in a time where people would rather defend the feelings of trans people and trans people who are not even in prison by allowing trans people to go to prison with women, women in women's prisons. And it's so funny, you know, I always say this, those of you who saw the No Jumper debate I did with Buck Angel and the 
trans porn stars uh, would know that I brought this point up, which is like, you know, it's really hard to not understand when women are talking about the negative ramifications of trans ideology, considering they bear the brunt of it. They are the ones, them and children, are the ones who face all the consequences of the of, of this. It's like women are the ones that have to be in prison and jail cells with male rapists. What was the one in North Carolina who got the women pregnant in prison? Go figure. Um, you know, they're the ones that have to face the consequences in sports, in locker rooms, etc. It's like, really, you know, I understand that there is such a thing as the turfs, if you will, that go overboard and just be, do become hateful. I've seen that. And to pretend that's not a thing, you'd have to be pretty ignorant. But, ignorant as in not informed. But, to pretend as if women who are speaking up about Things like this in particular, the invasion of women's prisons with male sex offenders, to pretend as if that is not completely logical to perceive that as an attack on women at the hands of trans ideology. You have to have your head in the sand. I, If I was a biological woman, I would not be effing with y'all either. Sorry. It, literally, I, part of I feel like as I've gotten older is in people who are getting old you can attest to this in the comments. You start to be able to put yourself, if you're a healthy person, put yourself in the shoes of other people. So like when I was younger, I would never understand when certain people would have certain perspectives. And as I get older, I'm like, okay, well, let me put myself in the shoes of women who are complaining about trans ideology. It's like, oh, yeah. So all these spaces for which they're vulnerable are being invaded right and and here's the sad thing and here's where i hope that we can pull people together it is true that it's not really classical and i say classical <laughs> what is the world coming to i'm like making up these terms classical trans women who are in these places doing these things right it's the fact that there has been no safeguarding around the, the identity of trans. There have been no gatekeeping whatsoever. And so now you literally can throw on a wig before a rape trial and go to a women's prison. That's the point, right? It, it, it's like people who don't understand that, I don't understand you, you know? It's like, think of it like this. Y'all ever seen like all the, I guess you don't have to say a documentary to know about them, but like all the Thai lady boys, like all the, there's the whole phenomenon of like, you know, trans women really in Thailand, like to pretend as if they are the same thing, not just with looks, but just by nature and everything to pretend as if they're the same thing as this man who threw on a wig to jump into a men's prison or a women's prison is you're you have to be completely dishonest to pretend that like to pretend as if actual trans women are the issue no however people who do wish to do harm particularly to women have an open door policy now quite literally the physical doors of all these women's spaces are open the jail cells are open so again to pretend as if you don't understand women's point is i think completely delusional but then again half of y'all think trans women get periods so i actually have a tweet drafted about that i'm gonna tweet this like probably tomorrow or something which is like i can't believe we're even at the point where like it's actually necessary for me to release a public statement that i don't get a period i just can't take it i was in a twitter space last night with buck we we're doing some like debate and there was like literally a trans woman in there who was talking about okay, well, maybe I don't bleed, but I have all the symptoms of a period. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. And then I'm looking like the big bad wolf for, you know, getting aggressive, but I don't know how else to be. If someone's in my face telling me they get a period when they don't have a uterus, I'm going to get aggressive. Listen, this happened in Scotland, this trans prison case. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, oh my God. Do y'all remember I did a main channel um, about Barbie Kardashian? Um, can we please put that on the screen as well? I did a main channel about Barbie Kardashian. The name was, you know, one of the trans women that was placed in a women's prison as well. And that was in Scotland. And this was years before it was this huge issue. So again, I've been saying this. I've been saying this. And I don't need anyone to blow smoke up my ass. I just need a little bit of like 
maybe credibility stamped onto what I'm saying at this point. Because if I was talking about detransitioners, trans women in women's pr- in women's prisons, trans women, you know, like puberty blockers, children transitioning, all this years before it was a thing, maybe just don't act like I'm so crazy the next time I bring something up that y'all think is not happening. Because at this point, what am I like four for four? Like it, it is what it is. But it's not about me, you know. I don't understand. I don't. Th- I think people have this thing that you know. I think women in general tend to get discarded, but like, especially like, you know, people don't naturally advocate for people in prison. There's this assumption that everyone in prison is there for these heinous crimes, which really isn't the case. I mean, there's a lot of people in prison for, you know, false imprisonment. There's a lot of people, you know, in prison for just lower level crimes that end up in a prison they shouldn't be. Um, You know, there's people that have life sentences for, for weed. It's like, and you're telling me that, those people don't deserve to be advocated for just because they're in prison. I don't believe that. Sorry. All right. Moving on. Oh my God. This one's going to piss me off. It's going to piss me off. Trump is now suggesting Ron DeSantis is a pedo. Amazing. My lashes feel like they're like heavy right now. That's what happens when I get stressed out. My lashes start just like tilting. Um, so... To say I'm done with Trump is probably an overstatement in the sense of if it comes down to him, it's between him and Biden, him and Newsom, him and whoever I've said this, then you can bet I'm going to vote Trump. Probably begrudgingly, though, at this point, because I'm just so turned off with him. And I feel like anyone who's upset about that, you know, be upset because you have this man who is you know, become a vaccine salesman, has ignored all the negative ramifications of the vaccine that he champions. Um, You know, he's, (laughs) here's what he did. He posted on Truth Social a picture um, of like Ron DeSantis with like some like high school girls or something. And this has been debunked, like period, it's been debunked. Um, And the accusation was that he was grooming these high school kids very low very despicable, you know, especially considering, um, is it really that smart of a strategic move to be calling anyone a groomer when you're in pictures with Jeffrey Epstein and when Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested, you said you wished her well? On what planet? On what planet? Please inform me. Um, and I'll visit there and try to understand this logic because I'm just not getting it. You know, the thing about Trump at this point is I feel like There's something to be said about a winner and a loser, right? And even if you're one of these people who believe that he didn't actually lose in 2020, even even for someone who thinks the election was completely rigged, right? The fact remains that the result of that was still that he lost. And I just feel like there's a stench on him, you know, losing to Biden. There is a stench and people just naturally sense that. And one of the things that people loved about him in 2016 was he was a winner. He had won at everything in life. And then he finally won the presidential election in 2016. And it was like, wow, he really is a winner. Now he's not, you know, he didn't do what he needed to do. Neither did the Republican Party to, uh, you know, make sure that what happened in 2020 didn't happen to make sure that mail and balance weren't massively in favor of the Democrats during a pandemic. They didn't do what they had to do. Um, and, you know, the fact that he's stooping low enough to smear DeSantis as a group. It, really? So how's your friend Ghislaine that you wished well when she was arrested? How do you get around that? Like, how do people get around that? Like, are the, are the 4D chess memes still going? I don't understand. I feel like you can only at this, Trump can only lose supporters at this point. Is he really gaining? Like, is there anyone who doesn't have their mind made up about Trump yet? Is there anyone who's like, I got to really figure out how I feel about that Trump guy? No. Everyone's decided to either love him or hate him. The only thing that can change now is he convert he can convert lovers into haters. And he's starting to do that. Like, I'm seeing the lowest level of support for Trump right now than I've ever seen. During his political career, at least. He is at an all-time low in terms of support, in my in my view. As someone who's very tapped into right-wing algorithms on Twitter and Instagram, YouTube, all that. It's like, no one's liking the things that he's doing. No one's liking how, you know, him pushing the vaccines. No one's liking him making false claims about the vaccines. No one's liking that he's smearing DeSantis in this way. And, he, and you know, the only what's the argument against DeSantis that I hear? Well, you know, the Bushes support him, okay? Okay? 
And there was a time when the entire Republican Party supported the Bushes. Like, I, I don't love the Bushes. I've never loved the Bushes. And I was very young when, you know, George Bush was president. Keep in mind, I wasn't even alive when the first George Bush was president. But the point remains, I've seen DeSantis be nothing but great on policy. And that was something that I never necessarily didn't see all the time with Trump. You know, Trump was very good at upsetting the libs. He's very good at triggering the libs. But DeSantis is good at, like, owning them via policy and owning them via legislation and getting stuff done. You know, it's it's not to erase all the great things Trump that did do in his presidency, but to pretend as if his time hasn't come and gone, I just don't know why people are doing that. Not saying I'm completely counting him out because stranger things have happened. You know, no one actually, well, some people did, but most people, even people that supported him, didn't think he'd win in 2016. So stranger things have happened, however... To pretend as if his support is not an all-time low and for him to calculate that this is the right time to throw out a grooming accusation against DeSantis? Like, what planet? What rocket ship did you take to what planet? It doesn't make sense. Like I said, he can only lose supporters. He's not gaining them. Who's he going to gain it in? Who, who, who on the left is coming over and like, you know what, I like Trump now. No one. Th- th- those days were gone. The whole leaving the left, you know, fad, that was a thing. And it can still happen, but I don't see anyone who's even leaving the left at this point going and being like, I'm a pro-Trump person. I think it's DeSantis' time. I'm, I'm sorry. And it's like, for people who want to be like, oh, well, he's the establishment pick. Really? Is he the establishment pick when he is investigating Big Pharma? Is he the establishment, you know, pick when he was the only, one of the only leaders, not just in the country, in the world, to keep the economy open when the entire establishment, and we're talking about the world establishment, not just the U.S. establishment, were coming down on him for that? Please inform me what's establishment about Ron DeSantis. Not that he doesn't have establishment ties, as all politicians do. Wasn't Trump the one who donated to the Clintons? Oh, yeah. So, I personally feel like it's DeSantis' time. And that's just my view, you know, and that's subject to change because it is 2023 and we are now on the road to 2024. So who knows? But as of right now, I'm team DeSantis. So unless Trump does something to win me over, because I know he's highly invested in my personal endorsement. Um, I'm on DeSantis. So we'll see what happens. Parade launches underwear ad in sizes up to 5XL. You know, this is actually very sad. So I wanted to talk about this last week when the ice storm happened. So I'm a little late on the story, but it's just very sad. So I had to talk about it. This ad campaign that was released is, is egregious. You know, this healthy at any, this, uh, Natalie F. Denishlian tweeted healthy at any size is a complete and total lie. Even her shoes are begging her to stop where her knees stop celebrating this. Agreed. You know? I mean, it literally looks as if she was strapped into these shoes. Like, this is not a person that is going to live past 40. And people can be mad about that. I didn't make it so. The sky is blue. My hair is brown. I didn't make it so. And it really is, you know, sometimes I think I'm an upside down world because this healthy at any size thing didn't even slow down during the pandemic when the virus was and still is disproportionately affecting and killing overweight people. So, you know, I, I'd like to say this is a fad, but this has been around a little longer than a fad. This has been around longer than the trans stuff. Like this started in like 2013, 2012. Like this has been a while now. We're going on a decade of healthy at any size and people get so upset. And it's like, you know, part of the reason that people don't like to argue with emotional people. So I see debates all the time where they bring in like a, a fat positive person and, a, and someone who's, you know, more interested in the health aspects and tries to debunk them. And the fat person just gets emotional. And it's like, We get it. Like, it is emotional. You know, I can't imagine. Like, my weight fluctuates a lot. So, my weight fluctuates. Like, I'll go up and down, like, seven pounds, like, every, like, month or so. Um, And part of that is due to HRT, which I'm on. And, like, I I just – one of the side effects is you put on weight. It is what it is. So, if I slip on on my diet, if I slip on 
you know, working out, like I start blowing up like a balloon. And even those like seven, and that's the maximum, sometimes it's like even like a four, three pound difference, I feel in my body, I feel walking around how much harder it is to be mobile. And like, you know, not that it's obviously anywhere close to this, but you know, it's not, it's not healthy. And you can lie about it if you want. But to me, it seems so much easier to just tell the truth and get healthy. Like whenever I see posts on social media from like people who are rejecting this ideology and like they're in the gym and they're obviously very fat and they're saying that they're going to change it. It's like, I always like get emotional because it's like, you know, that's what we need more of. And that mentality is like spat on. Like there are fat activists who say that you are actually fat phobic if you lose weight. It's like, ew, how dare you? And that's that, but that's how humans are though. That's that crabs in a bucket mentality. It's like, you see someone like not be fat anymore. So now you have to be upset about it. It's like, ew. Anyways, I feel bad for this model. I'm not trying to make fun of her. I genuinely feel bad. Moving on. This episode of the Blair White Project is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit in eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Their recipes have premium protein, seasonal organic produce, and sustainably sourced in seafood. And with Green Chef, you are reducing your food waste by up to 38% versus grocery shopping. You can shake off winter with delicious, easy-to-follow recipes that support your healthy lifestyle and taste really good too. Green Chef is an amazing meal kit company that I personally have been eating for a week since they've been sending me their packages, and I can vouch they're amazing. So go to greenchef.com slash Blair60 and use code Blair60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That is greenchef.com slash Blair60 and use code Blair60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much to Green Chef for sponsoring this episode of the Blair White Project and on to the podcast. So this story, people are going to get so mad at me. People are always mad at me. People love being mad at me. Andrew Tate. So... Andrew Tate. I don't know how to feel about the Andrew Tate story. I hear a lot of accusations about human trafficking and considering, you know, the Eliza Blue story and how it seems to be that human trafficking is now, and it's so crappy to say, in some circles, a bit of a buzzword at this point. It's like you have like prostitutes talking about how they've been human trafficked because they have a pimp. Let's not. Um... So Andrew Tate is still being detained in Romania. And first of all, I have to say, it is in some ways difficult to feel bad for him for this unlawful detainment, even though I I do because it is immoral, in my opinion, at this point, uh, how he has been detained with no evidence given forth and how, you know, we'll get into this. It says court rules women who worked for Andrew Tate were brainwashed. These victims are coming out, (laughs) victims. And, you know, they're saying, in fact, we weren't victims. We're being labeled victims, but we're not. Um, And the judges have just said, actually, you're brainwashed. So believe all women until they say they're not victims. I don't understand. The thing is, like, Andrew Tate has been on camera saying that he liked Romania because of the corruption there and because of the things he could get away with there, which... If that's the road you want to take, it's like, you know, if you like the laws better in this country, it's like, I respect it, go there. But like now you're seeing what happens. Yeah, you know, you may have been able to get away with certain things there. You couldn't hear, but like, look what happens now. They're keeping you in a prison and you haven't actually been charged with anything. I mean, that's just insane. That's some third world country-ish and that's what happens. Um, When I saw this article, I was like, damn, they're going to make me defend Andrew Tate, aren't they? Yeah. In some ways, you know, I have to. Like most people, I have sort of like, I do have like a natural aversion to like the Tate brothers. Like they just seem kind of like greasy and they just seem kind of like not my types of people. I agree with some things they say, but other things I'm like, you're doing too much. But it's like, there's no charges. He's being detained in what is said to be very inhumane conditions. The girls are saying they're not victims. The judge is telling them that they are. And it's kind of like, that's just of the devil to me. Like, that's not, thankfully, we don't have a country that works like that, but that's how Romania works. But then I have to go back to like, 
that you wanted to go there because you like the corruption and now you're getting the actual other side of the spear of the corruption. It's like, wow. Again, in my mind, in the court of Blair White, it's innocent until proven guilty. So we'll just see what happens. But as of now, there's no charges. As of now, you know, girls are coming forward saying they're not victims. The judges are telling them that they are. And that just seems very unjust to me. Um, I've heard word that this is going to end up being like an international trial and that like human rights lawyers are getting on this because it's like, it, it, you know, it's verging on a violation of like international law and like, that'll be really interesting. But I've genuinely never seen anything like this. I mean, I, I guess I didn't know much about Romania before the story and I still don't in many ways, but that's how y'all do over there. Y'all don't charge people. You just keep them in a prison and you tell people that they're victims of a crime even if they say that they weren't that's crazy so you know shout out to <laughs> andrew tate it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with that that that's that's some crazy ish you know what's crazy i've been very much like delving into like the manosphere recently not necessarily as like a fan of it, but the content is admittedly addicting. So I've been watching like just pearly things. Um, I've been watching a little bit of the Fresh and Fit uh, podcast channel. And the content is so addicting because everyone's so ignorant. <laughs> like literally like the Fresh and Fit, for example, it's like they bring on the dumbest hoes that say the dumbest stuff. But then half the stuff I like here out of the fresh and fit people is like y'all are dumb too it's like to me it's like a whole circle of people who just come across as like insane some of the stuff they say obviously is just factual like fresh and fit does come in with the facts but they're just they just seem so anti-nuanced to me and like i'm just addicted to the content they've really like that whole genre has really like mastered um content like it's just addicting i watch like all of it um and then just pearly things um i recently subscribed subscribed to her i like her a lot more than the fresh and fit um her channel's great um in terms of the content i don't agree with a lot of the stuff she says i mean the stats yes but like for me i'm just like the funny and ironic thing about the manosphere is there's so many people who are preaching about like high value men, how about high value women, how to get a man, how to keep a man, how to lose a woman, how to keep a woman, what makes a success, successful marriage, successful relationship. And every last one of them are single. <laughs> it's like, how are all of y'all single claiming to know the rules of the road? I just don't understand. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I guess it's kind of like, <laughs> it just is what it is. Shout out to the Manosphere. I do like just pearly things. Her channel's fun. Um, so the Twitter execs were speaking before Congress today, and it was glorious. Marjorie Taylor Greene went in on Yoth, who um, was in charge of like censoring content on Twitter, and just tore into his booty hole. Let's watch it. So glad that you're censored down. I'm so glad you've lost your jobs. Thank God Elon, Elon Musk bought Twitter. And you know what? Let's talk about something a little bit further. It's amazing to me, Mr. Roth, as the head and trust of safety at Twitter, your ability, or should I say inability, to remove child porn. Now, here's something that disgusts me about you. In your doctoral dissertation entitled Gay Data, you argued that minors should have access to grinder right so yoth had a dissertation in school where he talked about how minors should have access to grinder and that came to light after he was fired from twitter and this was the guy who was in charge of censoring cp on twitter so it's a little bit effing ironic he also wrote an article or i forget exactly what it is did something like posing the question if students can have meaningful romantic relationships with their teachers. Like this guy, in my opinion, is a straight up pedo. For me, I'm so hardline on this now. For me, it's like, it's always like, if it sounds, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's a duck, right? If you are unleashing all these Nambla talking points, all these 
you know, pedo talking points, all these predator talking points. And that's just what you are in my mind because it's safer for me just to assume that you are right. So like when Eliza blues on camera talking about, well, in my perfect utopia, children can consent to it. Okay. In my mind, not making any actual accusation here, but in my mind, the way I see you from here on out, you are a pedo in my mind because and everyone's like, oh, it's just a libertarian thought experiment. It's funny how the libertarian thought experiments always involve like kids getting with adults. Why is that? Can we can we do some libertarian thought experiments about like, I don't know, like prostitution, marijuana, all these other things that, that you know, if we legalize them, there's not this. It's always about kids. Anyways, let's keep watching. An adult male gay hookup app. Minors? Really? You know, Elon really? Musk took over Twitter and he banned 44,000 accounts that were promoting child porn. You permanently banned my Twitter account, but you allowed child, child porn all over Twitter. Twitter had become a platform, you said, connecting queer young adults. You also wrote on Twitter in 2010, can high school students ever meaningfully consent to sex with their teachers? Like, if you're posing that question, there's a reason. Because rational people don't even pose that question. It's kind of like asking, is the sky blue? People don't have to actually ask that because they just know that, you know. Again, these are people that are now off of Twitter. They're not running Twitter, thank God, but. In 2021, while you were the director of trust and safety on Twitter, an underage boy and his mother announced a lawsuit against Twitter because, because Twitter was benefiting from and refused to remove a lewd video featuring this boy and another minor. That is repulsive. But she violated. She's eating. Like the fact that she's, you know, this is what disgusts me about you. Like, I love it. MTG is like a little nutty for me. You know, like some of the stuff she does and says, I'm like, girl, thank you for being a fighter, but you just do a lot sometimes. This right here is the best moment I've ever seen her. I've never seen her on point more than this. Highlighted me. What, did, what were my tweets? Okay, let's talk about them. I was talking about the deaths being reported on VAERS. By the way, that's on the CDC website. I was also saying that I didn't think the in any entity should enforce a non-FDA non approved vaccine or mask. Guess what? A lot of people agreed with me, but you called that COVID misinformation. By the way, I'm a member of Congress and you're not. I also said the controversial COVID-19 vaccines should not be forced on our military. You want to know something? Republicans stop that in the NDAA. L ladies. Time has expired. And your time has expired. Damn. MTG. I mean, she tore into him. You know what I mean? It's like, it really is really quite sickening that these libs that were running Twitter, you know, had every intention in the world on silencing political opposition, but had CP running amok. I mean, it's very telling. When are we ready to have the conversation about how Clearly, not all Democrats, left-wingers, progressives, et cetera, support, endorse, or are trying to normalize pedophilia. But all people who are trying to normalize, support, and endorse pedophilia are leftists. Right? At least the ones that are open about it. Right? At least the ones that are willing. I'm not saying that there aren't right-wing pedophiles. Misconstrue me if you want. That's not what I'm saying. However... All the ones that are, you know, these academics that are just so willing to out in the open question, can students ever have meaningful relationships with their teachers? You know, maps and like, you know, all the academic terms for pedophilia. Th that's all comes out of the left. Right. And I'm just wondering when we're ready to have that conversation, how pro pedophilia is a leftist position. And people can get mad when I say that. It is what it is. Again, it's not to say there aren't pedophiles on the right. There are. Yeah, this is part of like the human condition for a certain segment of the population, right? Like they exist on every spectrum, every creed, every color, every race, every political affiliation. However, the ones that are 
open about it and want it to be normalized and have all these just intellectual thought experiments about it, those are always leftists, like exclusively. So is anyone going to take ownership of that? Because, I mean, I've been pretty insistent that the LGBT community takes ownership for the group stuff on our end. I think at some point the modern political left needs to ask themselves why this is happening on a certain segment of the modern political left. Just saying, right? It's like we atone for the crazies on our side. Like we got the Nazis. We got the like (laughs) flat earthers. We had the flat earthers. I'll own that. (laughs) We're going to own that. The right has our the flat earthers. Those are our people. And we, we, we let them do their thing, but we keep them in a corner, right? Y'all got to own that. It is what it is. Here's a screenshot of the Yol Roth <laughs> tweet. Can high school students ever meaningfully consent to sexual teachers? Stop. Stop, Yol Roth. Granted, his career is over. I mean, he's gone. So this one is a crazy story. Airbnb bans parents of Lauren Southern citing association with daughter. Yeah, they birthed her. Um, So Lauren took to Twitter saying, my parents just got banned from Airbnb for being related to me. They have never booked anything for me. They do not represent me in any way. They aren't publicly political in any way. How is this sane, Airbnb? So years ago, Lauren was banned from Airbnb because she, you know, is perceived as far right. I mean, hell, like even just like being a capitalist at this point, you'd be called far right. But anyways, she was banned from Airbnb. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, she was banned from like several other apps like Uber, Lyft, whatever. Unless I'm thinking of someone else. I don't think I am. Um, Airbnb, I'm so over, by the way. So first of all, this is, this is clearly, you know, our privatized social credit system, right? This is literally like, we don't do it like the Chinese do it necessarily. We don't have the government do it on face value, but they, you know, they off put that duty to corporations and, you know, the private sector and then they do their bidding, right? So the idea that Lord's parents can't book an Airbnb because they're related to her is pretty disgusting. I don't know if that's a country people really want to live in. Why would that be a country that leftists want to live in either, right? Like, y'all don't know about, like, paradigm shift? Y'all don't know about, like, pendulum shifts? Y'all don't know that just as easily as y'all can be banning people from, like, living and breathing, that that can't be turned around on you? Like... But that's the difference between the right and the left, right? Like the left, when they get power, they seize it and they use it to their fullest extent. The right doesn't do anything. The right will let, the right, (laughs) Republicans will let Democrats, Democrats have mass mail-in voting and, you know, quote, steal an election. It wasn't stolen. They, they just used the rules that were already there. They, you know, they, they did it legally. They just, they played dirty, but it was legal. Um, really sucks for, for Lauren and, and her parents and Airbnb. I mean, that's not a country I want to live in. The idea that, you know, we're verging on a period where they can shut off your banks. They can, it's just, it is what it is. All right. Here's for time for the segment that everyone wants. Reacting to woke TikToks. And I personally love this segment because it's fun. It's easy. And it's real. So <laughs> Lizzo TikTok tweeted this out and said, we have a serious mental health crisis in this country. So let's see what uh, she's talking about. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. So try gender and the way you identify in it can be very heavily based on your culture and your cultural background. For example, I know in Hawaiian culture, um, there are three genders. There's a third gender. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'm sorry, but... If you happen to be native Hawaiian, you could identify as that. You think you would like Google that before you get on camera running your mouth? 
You got on camera to run your mouth about how there's three genders in a certain culture and you couldn't even be bothered to research what it's called to prove it. Girl. And I can't with the... This, I mean, this woman is clearly damaged. Like, the makeup, the, the flag behind her. Like, if you're an audio listener, she has made trans her entire identity. Her eyeshadow, her lipstick, her earrings, her room. I mean, that is just sad. That is just sad. I remember a time, first of all, this isn't trans. That's the first thing. But if we're going to talk about trans, it's like, I remember a time when, like, transition was the gateway to living your life and then being normal. Like, that was the entire way, not to get off on a tangent here, that was the entire way I even perceived transition when I began, which was like, okay, I have this effed up thing happening in my brain called gender dysphoria. I can't leave the house. I can't participate in society. I can't get a job. I can't do anything because it's just that crippling. So I'll transition. And then after that, I actually became a productive member of society. And that was the key to, to, to letting me know it was the right decision for me. It's like, you don't make it your identity. It's you get, you do it and then you move on. But of course, like I said, that's a whole other tangent because that's me. That's an actual trans person. This is not trans. This is tri-gender. You are crazy, ho. You're crazy. I saw a funny meme and it was like, white people be seeing that they're ugly and suddenly they're non-binary. <laughs> and can we talk about how that's real because I've never seen a hot non-binary of you I just I just feel like more times than not it is someone who I don't care people can get mad is very like aesthetically not pleasing and you know it's kind of easier to just be like well everything's effed up anyways let me just eff it up more and dilute my gender identity more like it's just like a whole thing by as that third gender and then man and woman or if you happen to be you know from native hawaiian background and are you and on the other side you have a different background that also has a third gender you can identify as those two non-binary genders and then take your pick if you want man or woman or a, not even another non-binary gender oh another one you know it's so funny because it's a wrap for trans stuff. And I say that as a trans person because there was a time when like people would joke about things like this. Like, oh, I'm tri-gender. Oh, well, yeah, you're trans. Well, guess what? I'm tri-gender. Guess what? I'm a helicopter. I'm a uh, attack helicopter. We are now at the point where you actually do have to respect if someone identifies as attack helicopter. It is not. It is not a joke anymore. That's where we're at. Tri-gender. Girl, you're trying me. And you're trying it, but you're failing. But all in all, it comes from your cultural background. So for me, I come from a very heavy Dutch background and American background. So for me, it's more based on if there's man on one side, woman on the other, and non-binary is somewhere in the middle. And then I take up that whole area, the whole bar there. We can see you take up the whole area. That was mean. See, this is, this is, it, it ropes me into just being mean, but it's like, you know, no, no. screw me. I'm not mean. I'm defending my life. Like I'm sitting here as like a trans American. I, I really have to put up with Bethany here from <laughs> Wisconsin talking about how she's tri gender and making actual trans people look like a joke. No, that's way more offensive than me making a fat joke about Bethany. Sorry. And I know for a lot of people, non-binary is a completely separate spectrum. And I, that's just not my experience, but I still think that that's a valid experience to have. It all depends on your experiences and your personal history, you know? I hope no. this answers your question. Let me know if you have any more questions and I'd be happy to answer Girl, them. Girl, talk to your dad, please. And I know this is literally just stemming from a lack of a relationship with your dad. That's all it is. Give him a call. I'm sure he'll be forgiving. Just fix your relationship with your dad. And I promise you won't be trigender anymore. Amen. Next. Oh, my God. 
This one is a mess. Male TikToker is practically in tears after getting pushed back from a woman for using the women's restroom. I don't know if I'm ready for this one. Well, this is just lovely. I had a neighbor confront me for using the women's restroom. I lived here for four and a half years. Everyone should know that I'm a trans woman. I've always been known as Kaylee. I've always used she, her pronouns. I've been having some stomach issues because of trulicity and I had to use the bathroom real quick and there's could you be any grosser? Like everyone should know I'm a trans woman with the beard and all with the hairline all the way in the back, like Rosa Parks on the bus. Really? Everyone should know you're a trans woman and you can't even be asked to shave a beard. Women have to give up their spaces to you and you can't even be asked to shave your beard. Like, this is why people, <laughs> this is why people don't like trans people. Like, it's just, it's one of the lies of trans ideology is that anyone and everyone can be trans in the sense of like, somebody lied to her, quote, to quote the famous Tiffany Pollard, someone lied to her and told her that she could live as a woman. It's a cruel lie. It's not fair to this person, actually. There's this idea that transition is right for anyone who feels that they want to do it. And it's like, no, if you are 6'2 and a linebacker with a beard and a hairline all the way in the back, like Rosa Parks on the bus, girl, transition is not right for you. You're not going to alleviate any gender dysphoria. But then again, I don't think this person has any gender dysphoria because the first thing you do, speaking as someone who had it, is you get rid of the beard. And if you can't be bothered to make that bare minimum effort, why should anyone else put the effort in to convincing themselves that you are not a threat in a bathroom? You look like a threat. I would feel threatened with you in the bathroom and I'm a trans woman. I would not want to be in a bathroom with you if I saw you walk in with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back like Rosa Parks girl, I would get shook. I'm kind of shook right now. And they're single-use bathrooms, and it's the only place that I feel safe using the woman's bathroom. Well, I got done and got out, and this neighbor was talking to another neighbor and started pointing out the sign. I knew exactly what she was talking about because there's a big old woman sign. And I'm like, is there a problem? She's like, yeah, you're using the woman's restroom. You're a man. And I said, I'm a trans woman. And she's like, no, you're a man. And she kept saying that over and over. And then I, and she kept saying, you're not a she, you're a he, you shouldn't be using it. You, sh you were born a man and just over and over. And honestly, I just lost it. It just lost it and just started screaming and swearing. I, I just couldn't handle it. I just, my, this is my home. This is my safe. So you started screaming, like you are the problem. Kevin, you are the problem. You're screaming. You're verbally assaulting a woman because she felt uncomfortable with you in the bathroom with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back like Rosa Parks on the bus. Before she moved out to the front. Though we're also glad that she did. But, but you know, initially she was in the back and she got sick of it. You should get sick of it. And you should do something with your transition. Like... <laughs> People really don't realize they're the problem. It's like if, if you're disrupting a woman's bathroom and then you want to be screaming at people about it, you're the problem. A safe place. I should be able to use the restroom. The, the apartment manager knows I'm trans. Everyone knows my name is Kaylee. And then my group of friends, I thought my friends were all starting to yell at me saying I escalated and because she had two kids. I, I didn't even see the kids. They were there and I just lost it. Fight, flight, or freeze. And I. So you're also freaking out kids. It's not just women you're disrupting in the bathroom. It's kids. And even your friends are telling you the pro you're the problem. You're the problem. It would be a cold day in hell if any of my friends didn't have my back in a public argument. If I was ever beefing with someone on the street and my friend fixed their mouth to defend that person over me for any reason, my beef was with you now. Because that's just so gross. So if your friends are willing to do that, then you really are the problem. Sorry. And also, doing it this to kids. It's like, what a despicable person. 
freeze and I fought. You don't know what it's like to be a trans person. And then, and then my one friend started yelling at me and neither one, none of them stood up for them. I, they blamed me that I was the one that was at fault. You were. When, when none, none of them stood up to me when, when, when this person kept calling me he, she, he, man, like triggering and awful. Like I deal with enough on here. Like my apartment should. So, again, going back to what I said earlier in the podcast, as you get older and more mature, you're able to put yourself in other people's shoes. And so I would ask this person, I know they're incapable of it, but, you know, maybe your presence is triggering and awful to women in the bathroom. You don't know what the women in there have been through in their lives. Do you think, like, I know I'm talking to a wall here, but, like, A lot of women go through shit. A lot of women have been through things in their life and in their past and have been harmed by men. And like, it's probably, it can be like a shock to the system to be in a space where you think it's only going to be women and someone with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back, like Rosa Parks walks in and you're going to initially just feel threatened, especially in the closed quarters of a bathroom with one inch, one way in, one way out. Like I would not feel comfortable with you in the bathroom. That should tell you something. All None of your friends defended you. That should tell you something. My God. And it's just so crazy because it actually is in society a bare minimum to have people just be like cool with you, right? Like most people don't go through their lives wanting a problem, wanting to be upset by a stranger, wanting to have beef or have an argument. So like even at the very, very early stages of my transition, when you know no surgeries you know maybe like a week of hormones like whatever it's like there's been no actual feminization that's taken place yet but it's like I clearly even if I was getting clocked on the street I was getting clocked as you know a trans person not as a man in the sense of like oh I can tell that that is a trans person but they're trying and no one was ever cruel to me. And I used the bathroom because it was clear that I was not in there trying to hurt anyone. I was clearly in there like whatever. This person, you look like a convict. You look like a convict. Cue the Akon sound effect. Like that's what you look like. Like my apartment should be a safe place. There's nothing safe. For a trans person, there is nothing safe for a trans person. This is the life. And it fucking sucks. And even when you have your friends don't have your back. And then my one friend, Annette, just starts screaming at me. And I'm like, I start screaming back at her. I'm done. These are fair weather friends. These are not the friends that I need, want, and deserve. And if I can't find it here, I will find it elsewhere. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm so fucking triggered and feeling so. I would say those are real friends <laughs> who are able to see what's up. But I can't. Professors are teaching students that the term American citizen is a radicalized term and associated with whiteness because America was built on white supremacy. Gross. Tell me you are in your second semester of gender studies without telling me you're in your second semester of gender studies. I just got out of a lecture and my professor said something that really struck me that I feel like should have been super obvious that I just had not like connected the dots on before. And that is the fact that the term American citizen is like... A racialized term it's associated with whiteness whether we want it to or not because of the way that white supremacy is so like intricately bound with the foundation of the country that we call america that when you hear the word american citizen the first thing that comes to mind is a white person and what's crazy is i have the super says who because i can genuinely say when i hear the term american citizen i don't actually think of a white person like I'm pretty sure this person looks comparably my age, maybe a little younger, but I'm pretty sure we grew up in the same school system that taught us about America being a melting pot. And when I think of the American citizen, I actually think of everyone. I think of like the hardworking, like Mexican Americans. I think of like, you know, black Americans. I think of yes, white Americans, but I think of like the Asian salon owners. Like I think of everyone. So again, whenever these like woke whiteys come on and they tell on themselves it's like they're she's she's speaking about her own racism it's like these are thoughts that you have baby girl these are not thoughts that everyone has like these people need to learn how to speak for themselves if you're one of these 
woke whiteies, come on camera and say, I'm racist. Like, say what you are. Don't, don't, don't speak for everyone. Because that's just not, that's not, that's not the tea. Next. Oh my God, this person looks like Humpty Dumpty. White non-binary people are still privileged because they can call out people who misgender them while black non-binary people can't. Okay. I think that a lot of white non-binary people think that when they start to identify as non-binary, that their race just decides to cancel out. And at the end of the day, you're still white. And I don't think y'all understand the intersectionality of oppression, like identities, like what the fuck? And I'm not saying that your queerness, your identity is not valid, but a lot of y'all like to weaponize that shit. And it's kind of crazy because black women cannot do the same when we're misgendered. Nope. Even before I came out as non-binary, I was still misgendered as a black woman. And that's wild because it's y'all, white people, who created this whole binary. I feel really bad for individuals that have been so duped by this lived out shit that they really do view the world like this. Like, you can say a lot of things about this Humpty Dumpty person, but you can't say they're lying. This is really how they feel. They really view people in this hierarchy of oppression. This is literally the Oppression Olympics. Like, cue the freaking 2015 shoe on head video. Like, this is the Oppression Olympics. And it's just so sad, you know. Here's how you know that that issue just, just isn't real. So... I come from, y'all know I don't come from the best background. I had like a hard life growing up. Um, and many people don't know, but I have a brother. Many people don't know that. But my brother and I, because we grew up in the same home, had the same opportunities to be successful, really. I mean, in many ways, he had more, actually. Um, you know, I'm trans. He's a straight male, you know. And if you look at my life and his life, we've taken two completely different directions. He's been in and out of prison for my entire life, you know, uh, drugs, you know, just bad, bad, bad choices. And there's not enough to be said about that's what life is. Life is choices. I had every reason to be the person who was in and out of jail and on drugs. I'm like, I had every reason to be like a tranny prostitute on the side of the road, like every reason. Right. And yet that's not what I did because I didn't want to make those choices. And for me, it's like any ideology that tells you that your hardships are based on your skin color, or your non-binary, you invented that, or, you know, your gender identity or your transness, which is real. It's like that ideology is your enemy. That ideology is keeping you in shackles and that's what they want to do. You can make your life whatever you want it to be at any time, always. You can invent the life you want. You can pull something out of nothing. You can move up in life. And it's like, I just feel bad for people. I genuinely actually, it makes me kind of emotional that this person is clearly miserable. This person clearly sees white people and like, to the they see white people as such the enemy that they even view like white non-binary people as the enemy because they're white even though they're non-binary. It's like the mental gymnastics is real. And I just feel bad for them, you know? Listen, that is it for this podcast. I love you guys. I am so sorry that there is no podcast for two weeks, but we're not going to have that happen anymore. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And please, please, please give me a rating on Spotify. It helps me out so much. I don't know where we're at right now, but um, we have a lot of Spotify ratings for a show that is this new. You know, I look at a lot of like my competitors I have not competition with anyone actually, but I look at, you know, a lot of podcasts that are in the same realm and some of them have been out for way longer than me and they have more followers than me and their ratings are not as high as mine, not as many ratings. So that's a testament to the Blair White Army. And I love you guys. So keep it up. I love you guys. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Blair White Project.